Good morning, or good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to have you join us for a very special time for our organization. Uh, and um, uh, we're so thrilled to actually have an opportunity so that we can um, uh, thank our incoming and outgoing chairs of the organization, uh, Neil Parmalavi and Jonathan Brinston, um, and actually get you together as well. You know, normally we would be doing this at, uh, last year we did it at the Houston Club and we would normally be doing that. It would be more reception late in the afternoon. And uh, I'm sure you, as much as I, really miss the ability for us to get together and do it, but such are the times. So uh, we're gonna do the best we can uh, to celebrate these two individuals this afternoon as we gather together. But first, let me take a moment just to, uh, to uh, thank uh, you all, you, the members, uh, for your great support over time, um, and especially during this time of COVID. Uh, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you working with us, uh, your input to guide us as we've worked through this, this past year uh, and continuing, uh, I should say. And, uh, uh, and frankly, honestly, your financial support has been very important to us and uh, and really helping us to, to keep going uh, as an organization. So uh, from the bottom of our hearts at Central Houston, thank you so much for, for being a part of what we're about. Um, the, the, we look forward to you, by the way, let me just say in this coming year, and we can talk more about that later, uh, but this is, this is uh, very, uh, it, it very, very significant to us uh, as we go forward. Um, I would take, like to uh, take a moment uh, uh, to talk a little bit about how we're going to do the meeting today, or, or our get together. Maybe it's really not a meeting. I think that's a better word. Get together is probably a better word. Um, we're we're going to take some time to recognize uh, Jonathan and then Nilafar, uh, but we also are set this up so that we're going to have some uh, uh, breakout rooms at the end of our our. our basically our, our big session, so that you have a chance to network with your colleagues and friends uh, that are members of Central Houston. Uh, so uh, work with us as we go forward. Um, Virginia Oviedo on our staff is uh, uh, monitoring this and helping us kind of get this organized as we do this virtually. And uh, the one thing that we uh, would, would appreciate you doing is that in chat, I think you will find in there uh, a, a, a question uh, that she will put up or it'll come up here at some point, a question of, do you wanna participate? And uh, you, there it is on your screen. Uh, it won't be up the full time, but she'll have it up several times so that you can check yes. And we're just trying to get a head count uh, so that we can very quickly uh, make this work <laughs> as we finish up and we move into our social social time that follows uh, our, our, our get together this afternoon. So um, uh, with that, let me just uh, turn to uh, uh, ex express our great uh, appreciation to Jonathan Brinston, uh, who has served as chair of our organization. Um, and for and who also, in case you don't know Jonathan, and I suspect most of you do, he also is hard at work as the um, uh, as the uh, chair, excuse me, the CEO of Midway, uh, which is one of our very, very leading developers in our city, uh, with a really mixed portfolio of projects, and frankly, always taking on other really interesting projects, especially in downtown, and of course, right to the east of downtown, East River, with a very, uh, very large undertaking uh, on the part of Midway. Um, I was, just want to say that uh, I can't thank him enough for his help in this time. And uh, I've, I've enjoyed a personal re working relationship with Jonathan. It goes back, I don't even want to think about it, but I believe <laughs> it's probably like well, 2003, four, something like that, maybe 2002. Right. I can't even remember when it was, but it was, it was pretty far back, okay? And uh, it's been really fun working with you, and I've built such great uh, admiration, frankly, for your your uh, skill and 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 uh, just qualities in 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 terms of, of leadership as we go forward, and he has especially been helpful to us to give us a really steady hand. I think as we've worked our way through COVID, 
uh, of course, having to do the same with his own company, like every other CEO is doing, uh, but also sort of certainly guiding us, and I'll just say at a personal le level, guiding me as well as we go forward. So, um, you know, uh, you know, it has been a memorable year, Jonathan, and I'd just like to take a moment to, so that we can just chat a moment about this. Uh, uh, how would you describe your year as chair? I'm sure, keep in mind, when we were together last year at the Houston Club in January, I don't think we even knew what the word COVID was at that point. No, it was, uh, well, first I, I'll say uh, thank you for the kind words and, and likewise, it's, uh, you know, Bob and the, the Central Houston team do an amazing job and it's always fun to work with them and, and certainly honored to be, uh, to, to be chair of such a, an amazing uh, organization. I think we could all come up with uh, quite a few expletives to explain, uh, 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 describe 2020. And uh, it, was a, it was a strange year, you know, we it, it really, as you said, started in, in January and really was, was beginning to think about all the big priorities Central Houston had from the work and plan downtown and uh, quality of life, you know, focus and economic development and homelessness and, and North, you know, Houston Highway Improvement Projects are really thinking about where, where could I be of value to the team and the organization? And then I think as we got into February, um, we started to realize COVID was going to be a bigger, bigger issue. And, um, and then really that sense that while there was a lot of talk about, oh, we'd probably be through it by summer, that this was actually going to be a much uh, longer term issue and, and potentially have a, a far reaching impact, especially on, on downtown. And so, uh, you know, really just working with you and the team to think about how, uh, how, how, how could we address it? How would we, um, you know, how would we make sure that uh, we kept downtown a, a safe place to be? And, and really, what was the value we could pro provide to our, our members? And so, um, um, so that, that was all uh, interesting. And we had a lot of conversations about it. And, um, and, and I think one of the biggest biggest roles in, in Central Houston did a great job was just being a communicator, right, is, is kind of keeping communication channels open with, uh, with employers and, and owners. And, and a lot of the data we tracked and just being, being helpful with, uh, with information. And then really, last but not least, the other unexpected was, was starting the conversation with you about transitioning the, uh, the CEO role. And, um, um, and I want to I, I want to thank you for uh, for 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 hanging in there and, uh, and navigating us through this uh, this past year and then uh, on into this year until we ultimately uh, find a uh, uh, we we never use the word replacement because you're irreplaceable but uh, uh, find the person that's going to lead next. So thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, the uh, one thing you also took on during this time frame was the. Chair of Americas for the Urban Land Institute. If I, I think I've got it right. I'm not sure I've got the exact dates on the end dates and all that for you, but yeah. Uh, one, I'm not sure we all appreciate what a leadership role that really is. This is a well-respected global organization now, and uh, to have the position you have is right at the top, which is just I, I think uh, says so much about you and uh, what we have you know, what, what, as we go forward. And I, I know it's been, I'm just sort of interesting in reflecting on your time with that, because I guess you thought you might travel a great deal. <laughs> you <probably> haven't. <laughs> yeah, and that role, it, it presented many of the same, same challenges in a way and um, um, navigating, you know, trying to help lead an organization uh, that places a lot of value on, on, on large meetings and, and, and bringing the, the best in the industry together and then figuring out how do we how do we continue to deliver that uh, that member value and that connectivity in a um, um, in, in a COVID world? And and I think we would all agree in many respects, um, a lot of the things we're dealing with are are not necessarily new, but COVID has um, has, has has really accelerated a lot of trends. And so, um, in some ways, for ULI and and many organizations, has been a good thing. Actually, it's um, you know it, it's it's pushed us to do things that we probably should have already been been doing. And so, um, but yeah, one one benefit is I I have not had to travel as much as I would have. So, and we've appreciated that. Yeah, <laughs> we probably have a little bit more of you, <laughs> right? Which was really very helpful. Uh, you know. Uh, I really do look forward to the day. I think we all look forward to the day when COVID's in the rearview mirror, and I guess we all have a little bit 
coming into the year with the vaccine, we all have a little bit more positive optimism. I think we're all impatient. We want this to move faster and all that, but uh, it will be at some point in the review mirror. And I guess one of the things I know I've worked at and I really keep trying to do is keep thinking about what the future is as, as we are come out of this and we, we're looking forward to you know, where we're gonna be. Uh, and of course, I would also say that anybody who wanted to write anything about the future could because there was no, nothing's going to hold anybody to anything. Uh, yeah. And so the media has, and the, and the uh, networks have been just buzzing with different opinions about it. But um, I mean, give us, the, what do you think in terms of the future of downtown right now? And, and especially what, what excites you about uh, what, we, what we have going forward? Yeah, I think you just from a macro level and then maybe coming down. But I think from a real estate perspective, the entire industry and thus, you know, largely cities and communities are gonna deal with this, um, these sort of opposing points of still the desire for human connectivity and in-person connectivity, and then taking what we've learned in this environment, some of which are positive about how we create, you know, how we accelerate or leverage uh, digital technology, whether it's like we're meeting today on Zoom or how people shop or delivery services. And so I, I, we certainly can't kind of look away and say things are absolutely gonna return to normal, but bringing that then to downtown, um, I still think every great global gateway city, which Houston is, has to have a thriving urban core. And in Houston, while the urban core is larger than downtown, to me, um, downtown is 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 the core of the core. It's it's the catalyst, and so um, I, I don't it, you know it, it will go through some some changes likely and some transitions. But I'm still extremely excited about what downtown has as a as a as a value proposition for a thriving city and and creating you know the, the some of the premier workplaces for companies and places to live and and then you know arts and parks and so uh, so I'm excited. You know, a, a lot has been said about the the permanency, or there's a lot of speculation as to the permanency of various changes that we've all made in adjusting how we work uh, with COVID. And um, a lot of it has a great deal of impact on the workplace. And, you know, let's not kid ourselves, downtown is this wonderful mix of economic activities. That's what makes downtown what it is. But in many ways, the cornerstone of that has been forever, yeah. but in going forward really is the workplace. And so um, uh, what, what are you hearing nowadays in terms of just how companies are feeling about that right now and what they're sort of thinking? Yeah, we're, we're talking to um, a, a lot of CEOs about how they're thinking about it. We're talking to a lot of the you know, leading architecture and planning firms around the country about it. And, um, and certainly, uh, capital and the investment markets are certainly thinking about it. Um, the two ends of the spectrum are either everybody goes back to the office or, um, or, or everybody works from home. I think there will be those cases. The one, you know, the, the more moderate position that we're hearing more and more from companies is somewhat of a hybrid where um, the office is still extremely important from a culture standpoint, from a collaboration standpoint that they want human interaction, but that doesn't necessarily need to be five days a week. And so it may be that people are coming to the office three days a week, four days a week, and then having some, some flexibility. Um, I, I think that notion, you know, puts real pressure on the quality of the office space and the design and to make it uh, compelling for team members. And so we're hearing people think about that. We're also um, uh, hearing people uh, talk about sort of a, a hub and spoke model where they will still have you know, a large presence, uh, you know, in the urban core, but they may have a, a couple of satellite lo locations as, as well. And so, um, so you're, you're seeing a lot of people just trying to, to, to figure it out, listening to their, their team members and employees. And I think the other, the other message is, um, is really transportation connectivity, because once COVID's behind us, I think public transportation, you know, doesn't, doesn't become such an issue. But the, the work from home movement more and more they're hearing from team members is not so much about whether they want to work at home or not. It's, it's, it's how, to, how do people make the commute um, you know, more, more attractive. And so um, whether that's eliminating the commute or having access to public transportation. And so 
again, I think downtown's very well positioned in having some of the best quality office and, and having that connectivity and then also access to, you know, amenities and green space. That's part of making making space compelling for, for team members. So it's all about it's all about people. I mean, yeah, absolutely. In the, in the mix at this point, yeah. which that's right. We desire so much. Uh, but again, I want to thank you so much. And we did give you, uh, we, there are a couple tokens of appreciation yeah. here. And one is there's a, a, a resolution from the board of Central Houston. Uh, and I can read it so clearly from here, <laughs> uh, where it, it basically, uh, the, the association thanks him for his service in this unprecedented time and um, is providing his leadership for various initiatives that we have, which are so many, uh, and um, guiding us through this period of uh, refocusing on our leadership and of the organization and mission and strategy. And through all of that, I think the words that we say are that, um, that he's provided creative, energetic, enthusiastic, and enlightened leadership to materially advance downtown in the central city in these new times to thrive as a culture of, uh, excuse me, a hub of culture, lifestyle, and commerce for Houston, uh, our great city. And so uh, this was passed by the board, <laughs> obviously, unanimously on December 16th. And uh, Jonathan, we're, we're so grateful to you for that. And also, well, there's a little token of our appreciation that you might more rather put on your wall, which is um, uh, wonderful and ever-changing, and Jonathan's had a role in this skyline of the city of Houston. And thank you, Jonathan. We appreciate how much you're doing. Yeah. So, um, thank that, you. Very kind and and, and both uh, both beautiful. So thank you. So I'm going to turn it over to you now <laughs> and let you carry on from there to introduce our new chair. <laughs> yes. So um, the. Uh, the day every every chairman uh, gets to <laughs> is to to hand the baton, and uh, we we are incredibly uh, uh, fortunate to have Neil Lafar as our our new chair. I've had the pleasure of uh, working with her on the on the executive committee on on the innovation committee, which she did an amazing job leading. And um, so, Neil Lafar, welcome, congratulations. Oh, thank you, Jonathan. Um, I, I'm, I'm very excited uh, to step into this role, although you're leaving uh, some very big shoes to fill. Um, and I do want to add my thanks to, to you for your leadership, um, especially this past year um, and everything that you were able to you know, move forward regardless of COVID and the disruption um, and uh, everything else that we, we had to go through. So thank you. Um, I wish we, we could have been together and we could have toasted you uh, properly, <laughs> but we'll just do a virtual toast for now. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you uh, for all your kind words. Um, so as you as you look to this time, unfortunately, I didn't uh, I didn't cure COVID for you. And um, so how are you, how are you feeling about chairing the board and looking forward? Um, listen, I, I'm I'm very excited. Um, to, you know, COVID has um, been an opportunity for all of us to think about um, the world in a very different way, uh, for many to accelerate plans, um, to try things that we would have taken years to try. I mean, you talked about, you know, companies uh, being on different spectrums of work, right? And that right. has been evolving. Well, we were all forced to work remotely for you know, long periods of time. So it's been an experiment that we were forced into, but we've learned a lot. So um, I'm excited to see as we come out of COVID what those learnings are gonna be and the impact that that's gonna have um, for the central city, for downtown. Um, it will be positive, it will be different than probably what we would have envisioned, but you know, change to me, I've, I've always been someone who embrace, embraces change, get excited about those opportunities, look at it from an opportunistic perspective. Um, so I'm excited about that. Now, you know, you're leaving me at, at a tough time when uh, not only are you passing the baton, you, you're taking Bob away from me. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for that, um, but uh, sure. listen, I mean, you know, again, um, happy to be part of part of this as we go through the transition. As you said, um, we're not going to be able to replace Bob, but um, we can bring someone in to help guide us as um, as we think about Central Houston um, going forward. Yeah, fantastic. Um, you know how 
how would you like the uh, and, and by the way, I, I, I want to add my thanks the member to, to all of our members. Um, everyone has been fantastic in their their support over the, the last year. And it's, um, you know, giving given things pe all companies are dealing with. It's, uh, uh, it's you know, financial support's not always e the easiest thing. So but I do want to add my thanks to uh, to the fantastic support. And along those lines, you know, how would you like the membership to support the strategic in initiatives we've set forward for uh, for the organization? Listen, I think the organization is in is a very strong position. And, and you mentioned obviously the support that we've had from all of our members, but I think probably more than ever, we really need everyone's engagement. Um, as we're going through change, uh, we need to hear from all of our members, um, what's going on with their organizations, what changes they're going through, what their expectations are, how their expectations may be changing. We also have some great things, obviously, that we're going to be strategically focused on, um, and we could use their help um, as, as we move forward those things, whether it's, um, you know, you mentioned, obviously, innovation and, and what we've been able to do in, um, in the innovation quarter and uh, the strong organizations that, you know, we've brought, um, looking forward to seeing what, you know, happens with Launchpad. That's going to be a big, obviously, focus here as we move forward. Um, so it's important to get our members engaged in, in activities like that. Um, obviously a big project is the um, North Houston um, Highway Project, right? That we've been involved in. That's a very long-term strategic project and our opportunity to look for and be involved in, in the civic enhancements part of that. Again, that's where we need our members in the community involved and in hearing their voice and, and, and their um, support for that. Um, we are going to continue to look to bring new, um, you know, employers to downtown, right? If they may look different, right, than than uh, former employers, and and so again, downtown, the mix of, of businesses in downtown will continue to change, um, which is which is great. And so again, there are so many different ways that our members can help support us in um, in any one of these strategic initiatives um, that we have. So we're not going to change our strategy. We're going to pivot as needed, right? Um, and the more involvement and engagement we have uh, from our members, the better off you know we're all going to be. Yeah, agreed. Fantastic. So um, for uh, for our members joining us today, how would you describe your uh, your leadership style? <laughs> um, well, listen, I um, I'm a very collab collaborative person. Um, yeah. I, I love to team. Um, I, I, you know, uh, I come from a perspective that um, I want diverse perspectives. Uh, I love to hear everyone's perspective um, and because I think that makes decisions we make and then actions we take to be much more effective and longer lasting. Um, so I look forward um, to not only engaging with our board, certainly our um, executive committee, Bob, our leaders, but certainly all of our members. As I said, that's why the engagement to me is so important to get all those different perspectives from every, everyone. Yeah, great. And as you're um, sort of in your position leading leading a firm through uh, 2020 and, and, and thinking, uh, sort of looking ahead, has, has it changed how you think about leading or reinforced how you think about leading? You know, it's, it's been interesting. I, you know, um, I've always thought that it's important for organizations and, and leaders to be nimble and COVID has taught us more than ever, you know, most of us over a weekend, right? right. Uh, had to pivot to uh, figuring out how to work remotely to deliver, you know, projects. And, and in my case, um, get people to places they needed to get back to. Um, so everybody's been through that. Um, and so I, I think, you know, it's reinforced nimbleness being important, agility. Um, we don't have to get things 100% right but we do need to make decisions probably a lot more quicker in today's environment than we've ever had to before. Uh, and then pivot and change and adjust as, as needed. So um, as I think back, you know, um, to how, how am I doing things differently post COVID? It is making, you know, decisions faster, revisiting them if needed, um, saying, yep, we made a mistake there, but at least we did something and let's, you know, adjust accordingly. Um, and then I've learned how to work remotely. I'm an extrovert, so COVID has been um, very challenging for Nilafar. <laughs> I am very much looking forward to 
um, putting it, you know, in the rear view mirror, getting everybody vaccinated and being able to safely come back together. Yeah, it's um, yeah, a friend of mine said um, that there, there were times in 2020 where he felt like he was living months in a day and having to, you know, deal with so many things. And, uh, and to your point, there was no there was no playbacks or playbook. So you would, you would make the best decisions you could. And if, if uh, you needed to adjust, you adjusted. And so uh, I think we all, we all felt that way. And um, from an organizational standpoint, share your, we've talked about Bob's transition, share your thoughts around uh, the organization's leadership change. Yeah, listen, this is something that Jonathan, obviously you and the previous chairs um, have been working on for two or three years, right? Um, so, uh, there's been a plan in place. Um, we've been very strategic about it. Um, we were hoping Bob would never leave, um, but, but we also all respect the fact that Bob does have a life um, yeah. and <laughs> the time has come. So uh, we, I think- We again, all planned for it and just hope we didn't need the plan. <laughs> yeah, and hope the next chair would have to deal with it. And so right. I am that next chair. Um, no, but again, I think the organization is in, is in great shape. Again, we have great leadership. Um, we have, uh, you know, a plan uh, not only to go and, and find um, our next leader, but a transition plan with Bob, right? That has been very, very well thought up um, and, and giving us enough time to make sure that the transition happens timely. Um, and so I, I feel really good. Again, I, I wish... Um, Bob could stay on at least for another few years, but um, I'm also excited to see where where we, we can take this organization with a new leader. Yeah, agreed. Well, great, thank you so much. Um, again, congratulations and, and thank you. Um, we, we know the organization's in, in great hands with you and uh, look forward to seeing all the, all the great things you, you accomplished during your turn, your term. And uh, with that, we'll bring, uh, bring Bob back in and see if there's any, uh, any questions for, uh, for any of us. Uh, uh, Neil, I just want to thank you for, uh, and actually thank PwC for sharing you with us. <laughs> okay. You too have global roles, <laughs> a right. very big global role. And, and so um, to take care of us here in, in downtown, we, we really deeply appreciate, I, I can't say it in advance, our, our thanks to you uh, for, for helping us. Um, we do uh, have, in fact, um, uh, let's see if we have some questions at this point. And uh, please, uh, if you will, uh, 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 if you've got questions for Jonathan uh, or Neil Afar, um, uh, just put them in the questions and answers and uh, we'll pick them up. Uh, Nilfar, we have one for you. Uh, and that is uh, in your experience as chair of the innovation committee, which you did nicely chair for Central Houston, we're deeply appreciated, but we appreciate what's come out of that. Um, uh, what did you learn about the space? And was there anything surprising to you <laughs> with that? I, I think that's a great question. Um, yeah. A few observations. Um, one, you know, I, I think we all agree that it was very important for our city to um, be at the forefront and, and have um, be focused and have a strategy around bringing um, those innovators into our city, right? So, um, you know, the question was, what did I learn? What was I surprised by? What was, I think, pleasantly surprising is the level of interest and engagement that we had um, from various organizations, um, you know, to like Mass Mutual, Generator, and others to actually come to Houston, invest in our city, and get engaged with us. That that was that was fantastic to see um, that happen. And and honestly, the effort that went on, um, there was a lot of partnership in, in bringing those organizations into town. Um, it is it's important for us. The other thing that I think was great, Bob, is from chairing the committee was um, the number of you know our members um, that wanted to get involved with that and wanted to know how they can help, right? Um, not always knowing what that may look like, but saying I'm here, willing to help, whether it's you know pull us in as as mentors, as um, in whatever capacity you know us as an organization can support. 
um, these, you know, um, programs that are coming into town, you know, companies that are gonna, you know, startups that are gonna get engaged with them, right? Um, so on and so forth. So it, it's been great to see even during, you know, the past year, how much activity we've seen there, what we brought in, um, companies that are getting engaged, both locally and nationally. So we are getting national visibility as well, right? With, with some of these um, organizations like, you know, Mass Challenge. Um, and, and look forward to seeing, you know, where that goes. Fortunately, you know, that's a space that during COVID probably didn't really have a setback, right? And, and continued to move forward at, at a pretty nice pace, so. In fact, I could probably guess that, that COVID might even be helping accelerate some areas, right. certainly some areas of innovation without a doubt, um, no doubt about that. Uh, for both of you, uh, uh, you know, we have, Houston's unique, I think, uh, and it has a number of, quote, business districts, although it's, I, I would like to think downtown is the capital, and, and I believe it still to this day is the largest concentration of workers in the entire region. Um, uh, I guess for either, well, for actually for both of you, what makes downtown so special? Okay. I think that's a gimme. That's an easy one. <laughs> Don't ask that yeah. question to Bob. He'll go on for hours. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, let me start. You know, I, I remember, so, I, so I'm not a Houstonian. I'm actually an immigrant. And I remember coming to Houston 40 years ago, almost now. And um, one of the first places my father, my father had gone to school um, at UH in Houston. So he was showing us around, right? And I remember him t very clearly taking me to downtown. Um, I love photography. So even at an early age, I was um, taking pictures, of these huge buildings, and it was amazing. But there was no one around, right? Um, the streets were empty. He told us we can't get out, you know, um, just look at the buildings. They're beautiful. I think we may have parked and gone to the Hyatt and had tea or coffee. I don't, I don't remember. Um, and then to watch Houston, so I've, you know, I've worked downtown Houston my entire career. I've been downtown Houston for 30 years. Um, and I've watched downtown continue to develop and evolve um, into, honestly, a place where, one, I've missed um, the past almost year that I haven't been able to, to drive into, into this, um, you know, be, 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 be in the business community, right, um, be able to walk and, and meet with colleagues, with friends who work downtown, obviously my clients, um, see, you know, see again how it's evolved, um, place where you wanna stay after work and actually, you know, enjoy um, now a, you know, meal, uh, drink, go to the ballpark. Um, it's, it's alive, right? Um, and so, it's a pretty special place for me. And, and when I look back at my first experience of driving through downtown, um, now it may have been deserted for a while during COVID, but it's, it's come back and it will come back even further, right? Um, I, I've, I've enjoyed watching that evolution and it, it really is a second home that I enjoy going to every day. Yeah, that's, that's funny. You, you and I have, very, uh, we've never talked about this before. We have very parallel power. Pats, I, I'm an immigrant as well. Uh, I moved from London 45 years ago, and we actually lived in the Hyatt Regency for two months. And, and uh, you know, having lived a very urban lifestyle in England, I remember walking over to the hotel in the evenings, wondering where everybody was. And uh, it, it was sort of an, an odd existence, but uh, I would walk with my dad down to One Shell Plaza, and that's where he spent his career. And um, I always blame Gerald Hines for uh, that the one hell, one shell plaza was the reason I was hooked on the on the development business early on. I'd stand at the base of that building and just look up and ad admire how beautiful it was. But um, but similarly, it's it's just been amazing to see the transformation of of downtown into it to what it's become today on this truly, you know, thriving not just business district but urban district that has all these incredible amenities and um, and I I too like. Like you, Neil Afar, it's um, I miss you know spending more time down there and being being down there on a on a daily basis. There's just a, a great energy and you know you just feel the the, the people and so um, so yeah, it's um, it's it's a special place. And I, and I think as a city, we've undergone 
you know, a, a parks and green space renaissance, but maybe nowhere more impacted than downtown. And you just think what Discovery Green has done and what Market Square Park has done and what the new park in South Downtown announced. And then obviously the, the connectivity to, uh, to Buffalo Bayou Park, it just, it just adds to the richness and the, you know, the amazing place that downtown is. Yeah. I have a very specific question and I, I think we'll sort of use this as our last one. Uh, and that is, uh, as you all, we all know, we opened uh, Downtown Launchpad, uh, Project of Central Houston, and uh, with our great collaborators in that space um, back in, um, actually, what I think about it was last fall, although we were pretty much done in the summertime. And again, we're still awaiting <laughs> more, more people coming back to it. It's ready uh, and waiting for them. But um, I, I'm the, the question really is, what do you what do you imagine as a next phase for uh, development might look like for the efforts that, that we began as downtown launch pad? Uh, I think we all thought it was going to be a vision going forward. So, any thoughts on that? Yeah. Go ahead, Jonathan. No, I was just going to say one. I think you know, unbelievable credit to Central Houston for pushing that forward, and and in many ways, um, as Neil Far said, bringing. You know, generator and uh, and mass challenge and others. You know, in, in some ways, those are those are theories until they've been proven um, successful, and they've been unbelievably successful, and and maybe more so than than we thought. And I think there's you know there's continued opportunity and growth there. Um, and I think it's you know it's a big part in the overall innovation ecosystem across Houston, and obviously, kind of Main Street being the innovation corridor, so including you know Launchpad and then how is that being connected to uh, to Rice and the Ion, and so it's I just think it's all important um, both for downtown, but also you know Houston more globally and sort of bringing innovation and, and fostering innovation in our city. Yeah, listen, and what I would add to that, obviously getting it operational up and running, which will happen here, uh, you know, as we all come back to work is important. Um, but aligning a lot of the programming um, and with downtown businesses and um, making that connection, I think will be important. And the other thing that I know uh, we want to do um, in the innovation space is really extending um, this programming um, to underrepresented um, populations as well. So I know that's another thing, Bob, we, we've been you know, talking about as we look at you know, what, what we, who has come and, and what may be next. Um, so those are, I think, a, a few other things that kind of come to mind as I think about those next stages. That's good, well, thank you, that's helpful. Uh, it's certainly been an exciting project and uh, I, I'm, really feel, you know, people, we all talk about, you know, we went after Amazon and maybe we feel like we got snubbed and all that. But my sense is that coming out of that is that we, we really, that really, we've talked about the Main Street Corridor and, and the, the economic power, frankly, of downtown and through Midtown, Rice, Medical Center, and just how powerful that really is. And I think, I think it's really wonderful to see what has happened uh, since that time of the Amazon, which seems like it was forever ago, but um, it, I, I feel right now there's only one way but up with that. But uh, again, let me take a moment to just uh, thank both of you for just your tremendous leadership and service here. Um, and, um, you know, we've, we've, we've got a way to go, so we're going to keep going. Okay, it's going to be a very interesting year ahead uh, as we go forward.